Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here for our second show of the day. Taking a look at the Jaguars' possibilities with potentially trading up or trading down in the first round. It's a really interesting question for the Jaguars. Will Trent Balky and the, these Jags trade up or down in the first round? Will they decide that they want to get aggressive to go get a player? Will they really like the way the board's falling and feel that, hey, we can move back a few spots and still get someone we want? It's really interesting to look at. Going to look at kind of Trent Balky's history. Going to look at kind of how some of these moves could work for the Jaguars, maybe some players they might be interested in. So excited to get into it. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop and pick up some new Duval gear. So Trent Balky, he has traded down in the first round several times. He did it last year twice, but would he trade up? Uh, generally speaking, when I talk about trading up, think about trading up, Unless you're trading up in round one for your like franchise quarterback, your quarterback of the future, or a blue chip prospect, there's so much pressure and you're taking away bites at the apple with other draft picks that you're having to trade to get up, to move up in the first round. I don't love it, generally speaking, but Trent Baalke has been involved in several trade ups in the draft. He traded up from 13 to 11 in 2010 to select the tackle Anthony Davis for the 49ers. And then in 2013, he traded up from 31 to 18. That was a big jump to land safety Eric Reed. Both of those moves worked out fairly well for him. So I don't think that he's going to be uh, looking back at his history and being like, well, didn't really like the way those two turned out. I'm going to you know, change my stripes here, change my spots uh, for the Jaguars. I-, I think that he'd be willing if the right player is available at the right spot for the right price to potentially move up and land somebody that he really values. I think he's shown that he likes to do that. He's also traded back into the first round twice on draft day. Traded back into the first round to get Devin Lloyd just a couple years ago. Uh, He has never given up more than a third round pick and value on top of the pick swap, right? Like if you're trading, um, 31 for 18, he also gave up a third round pick for that to go up and get Eric Reed. So he's never given up more than a third round pick uh, to go up and get a player in the first round. So that's something to keep in mind. I think you appreciate the fact that he's been fairly measured, not giving up too much to move up. Like if he's valued players, he's found a reasonable price to, to be able to move up to get them. Um, and he hasn't really overspent. Like you don't see him giving up a ton of draft capital, a ton of picks, super high value picks in the future um, to go get players that he values. And I think being a little bit measured, uh, I will commend him on that. I I appreciate that. But seven times he has made a trade during the draft involving first round picks. So that's a lot. Like there's a good chance that there is movement for the Jaguars, whether that be trading up, trading down, maybe even trading back into the first round. You've seen Trent Baalke do it a lot. Um, if he wanted to trade up for a prospect, the Jaguars, if if they were going to trade their second round pick, which again, he's never traded a first and a second to move up in the first. So that is something that has not been in his wheelhouse, something he's not been willing to do because he values the second round pick and it is a very, very valuable pick. But if he said one of these top receivers, I've just got to have them, you know, Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. will probably be the top wide receiver off the board. But if one of those guys slips down into the 8, 9, 10-ish range, if that's the case, I think maybe you could move up for one of them. Um, And again, based on trade value, I think giving up 17 and 48 would get you up there. Uh, You could also put together a package of picks. It doesn't necessarily have to be the second. The Jaguars have their third round pick, the compensatory pick. They have two fourth round picks as well. So they could get, you know, they could put together a package that potentially would be enticing for um, one of those teams in that range if one of those teams wants to move down and amass more draft capital, right? So I do think that that's a possibility for him to trade up into that range for one of those receivers potentially. If he was trading up to 8, 9, 10, somewhere like that, I don't know that there's any other players that you really trade up into that range for outside of one of those receivers if they were to fall, one of those top three receivers. That's how I view it. Of course, he could see it differently. Uh, but if you're talking about just giving up you know, their third-round comp pick, 96 overall, you could probably get to like 13 or 14 for for the value of that pick, You know, move 17 and 96 up 
to, to get up to 13 or 14, if you wanted to trade up into that range, who would it be for? And why would you feel like you need to do that? Maybe he falls in love with one of the tackles. I think a Marius Mims would be like Balky's prototype offensive tackle. And the Jaguars do have a future need at tackle. Cam Robinson is entering the final year of his deal. Walker Little is entering the final year of his deal. Maybe that's something that's enticing. Maybe maybe he views Brock Bowers similarly to how I view Brock Bowers, that he's a blue chip player that could really change an offense. And if he fell into that you know, early teens range, maybe he'd be willing to do that. Maybe if the top corner hasn't come off the board yet at 13 or 14, he'd be willing to trade up. And again, we don't know who they view as their top corner. For me, it's Quinion Mitchell. And I think if Quinion Mitchell was there, I could see him getting fired up about it because Mitchell, he has the size, he has enough length, he's very physical, um, but he is an incredible athlete. And I think the best football is ahead of him because you saw him playing so much off coverage at Toledo. I think he can do that at a high level, no question, but I think he has the traits and the physicality to play any sort of coverage, including press man, press bail, which is what the Jaguars are going to do a ton. Maybe it's Terry on Arnold that they value that highly. Um, we'll see how it plays out. But I do think there's some possibilities for for prospects that Trent Baalke could potentially fall in love with to move up into, again, that early teens range. Um, I don't know personally that I would trade up for a tackle or a cornerback. Like, I wouldn't trade up for Marius Mims. I don't know that I would trade up for Quinion Mitchell. Because there is so much talent at those positions, not only for 17 overall, but like throughout the draft, there is just a lot of talent. And I wouldn't necessarily want to, you know, give up another bite at the apple, another swing at the bat to go up and get one of those guys necessarily. Because if I'm giving up 96 overall and I look at my board and some of the prospects that might be available at 96 overall, would I rather have one player or two players? Would I rather have 17 and 96 or 13 or 14, right? I'd probably rather have 17 and 96 because, again, unless there's a blue chip player that falls to that range, I would rather have two of those prospects versus one. That's just kind of kind of how I view it. Um, but, again, they could decide maybe we want to give up a fourth and a fifth or, or both of our fourth round picks to try to move up a couple spots to, to get someone. And I'm not going to – necessarily knock it until I see what they end up giving up or trading or doing to move up to get one of these players. Um, But again, probably just not what I would do in that situation. Now, Balky, as I mentioned, he has also traded down quite a bit. Um, I think that that is definitely a possibility. Like we saw him do it twice last year. We've seen how he likes to stockpile picks in certain scenarios. If there's a lot of prospects on the board that he values, why not try to move down, get more value, get more draft picks? Um, so I, I think that that could make sense as well. If he wanted to move down just a couple spots to like 19 or 20, you're probably talking about adding a pick in the comp pick range there, uh, third, late third, early fourth round type of pick. Like if you traded 17 to the Rams for 19 and 99 overall, that could make sense. Steelers at 20 overall, if you traded 17 to them for 20 and 98, that could make sense as well. Uh, or again, a lot of teams that uh, could have an early fourth, maybe in the back half of the 20s, that that those trades could make sense. Um, like the Green Bay Packers, they're at 25 right now. Um, they could probably give you 25, 88, and 126 for 17. Something like that. I think that's the type of trade you would be looking for Because, again, you want to find value. And I think that the Jaguars, if the right team wants to trade up, could certainly do that. Um, And uh, looking at these ideas, I'm definitely not patently against any of them. I'm not against sticking and picking. Uh, I I think that the Jaguars are in a great range to land a prospect at 17 overall that can make a really good impact for them in 2024 and beyond. And Trent Walke, he has been fairly good at drafting players that make a big impact in the first round. Um, Certainly, I think if you're able to land a player like Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, or even Brock Bowers, that would change the calculus for the offense on the uh, for the Jaguars, and and you know, be guys that are like franchise elevators. They're not only what they can do for you when you target them with the football, but the attention that opposing defenses will have to give to a Neighbors and Odunze or a Bowers, it is just they're magnets. They they have so much magnetism on the football field that even if you're using them as 
you know, as a distraction, as a decoy. It's making it easier for everyone else. It's making it easier for Trevor Lawrence. It's making it easier for the running game. So I would not be against trading up for any of those guys. But those are probably the three I would be okay with trading up for. I don't think you trade up for a corner or a tackle. I really don't. Again, because this class is absolutely loaded at those positions. It's loaded at wide receiver as well. But the the chasm, the difference, the gap between neighbors Odunze and the next wide receiver, I think is big enough that I could see justifying trading up for one of those two guys. I really could. Um, and I, I love, you know, Adonai Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr., Keon Coleman. I think all those guys are going to be really good pros. But I think neighbors are Odunze. They just they just change the calculus a little bit more than those guys. They change the picture. So does Brock Bowers. So I would not be against it one bit. Um, I don't think that Trent Baalke would be interested in like a Byron Murphy or a Johnny Newton. But I actually do think one of those guys would be worth trading up for either one. I think they're both going to be fantastic. And while there are some defensive tackles later in the draft, that I think can make a huge impact. I think those guys have a pretty big um, gap between them and, and the rest of the class at defensive tackle, interior defensive line. At 17, you probably have all but the top three receivers available to you. Like I said, I think if you stick and pick and you want to take a wide receiver, you're probably looking at one of Brian Thomas Jr., Donna Mitchell, Keon Coleman. I think you probably have – Everyone on the board except maybe the top corner, if you're talking about taking a corner, which feels like maybe the most likely route right now based on their current roster situation. Um, maybe it's one of those Alabama corners at 17, whichever one's there, Kool-Aid McKinstry or Terry on Arnold. Um, so I would guess that you're probably going to get CB2 at 17 if you look at it that way. Um, Johnny Newton might fall to 17. Again, I don't think the Jaguars will, will draft a Johnny Newton or a Byron Murphy because they don't have the length that Trent Baalke typically looks for. But I think, again, whether the Jaguars want to move up, move down, stick and pick at 17, they're in a really good spot because I think there's going to be four to five quarterbacks coming off the board before them, probably three tackles, a couple edge players, which I, I wouldn't be against drafting an edge player in the first round. Because, you know, a third edge that can absolutely rush, rush the passer and create kind of a dominant room, I think, could be awesome for the Jaguars' defense and their team overall. But I doubt that they're going to take an edge um, just because they feel good about Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. I think they're looking more for edge depth than really an impact edge. Uh, so we'll see how it plays out. They've got some really good options, whether it's cornerback, receiver, tackle, edge, even though I would doubt that at this point. We will see what the Jaguars do, what Trent Baalke has up his sleeve, but I definitely would not be um, looking away from your phone or looking away from the TV in the first round because the Jaguars, Trent Baalke, he has been known to move up, to move down. There could definitely be some movement on draft night in the first round and beyond. So again, can't wait to see how it plays out. We've got just about a month, actually exactly a month. Isn't it on the 25th? The NFL draft kicks off. I believe it is. One month from today till the 2024 NFL draft. Would love to know what you think about the Jaguars, their first round pick. Like, do you want to see them trade up, move back, stick and pick? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.